Hello, Dr. Matt here. This is finally my Codical series of videos. This is three years in the making and I'm really excited about this because I'm making this video for people who have tried honing on codicals and just haven't been able to do it. What I call codically challenged like myself. Uh, for, for, for years I've been trying to do, do this and I haven't been able to do it, but finally I figured it out. I cracked the code. I'm going to be able to show you how to do it quickly and easily. It's great. This is going to be really exciting. Uh, but a couple things I need to say first. Uh, it, in this, it, this first part of the, uh, the video, it's going to be a three-part series. This first part, I'm going to talk about uh, how I came about this, uh, some things that I found out, and I'm going to show a lot of microscope slides. Um, if you don't want to hear me talk and you don't want to look at the slides, click right here and it'll take you straight to the technique video. That's the second part of the series where I'm just going to show you how I do it. I explain how I do it and then I do it. Um, also, if you can hone on codicles really well, I mean, you're great at it. You've been doing it for years or decades and you can do things like judge the feedback of the razor right at the it, on the stone and the edge where they meet. Uh, you can do things like look at the undercut. I still don't know what that means. And, 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 and judge how it's, how it's working. If you can tell by the sound as you drag that blade across there. And you can do all those awesome things that I can't do. Don't watch this video. <laughs> Inevitably, it's going to make you mad. All right, so just turn it off. All right, now that there's half of the people left, I appreciate you guys who stuck around. If you decided to stick around and you can hone really well on codicles, don't say I didn't forewarn you. All right, now I said that this started three years ago. Uh, three years ago when I came off my video, uh, the Perfect Edge video with the, the, the nano cloth and the CBN, I thought, wow, I'm pretty good at honing on codicles. So, uh, or, uh, I'm pretty good at honing, I'm gonna try a codicle. So I ordered a codicle, and I tried honing on it, and wow, it was a disaster. I couldn't get anywhere on this thing. I couldn't get anywhere. I tried this, I tried that, I thought, you know, I'm pretty good, there must be something wrong with the stone. So I called up Jared, who I got the stone from, and Jared was very gracious and talked to me for a while telling me what I, some things, this and that. And I remember the final thing that I asked him, I said, Jared, I said, how do I know when I'm done on the stone? I mean, when am I finished? Because I was thinking, well, maybe I'm just not going far enough on the stone. And he said to me, he said, you know you're done when that stone has given everything that it has to give. Well, at the time, I didn't know how to process that, okay? So I kept trying on the stone. I still couldn't get it to work, so I took it out in my garage and I smashed it with my sledgehammer. No, I didn't do that. I wanted to do that, but no, I sold the stone. So uh, that was it. Uh, I didn't go near codicles for at least a year. Well, a year later, I figured, well, I'm going to try this again. So I didn't just get one codicle. I bought at least a half a dozen of them. And I tried honing on every single one of them, and they all failed. I couldn't get an edge on any of them. It was very, uh, very uh, 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 humiliating, so to speak. Um, except I did have one. There was one saving grace. There was one of the stones that I was able to hone on. And that, because of that stone, that's probably why I'm still here doing this and why I'm talking to you today, because it was the one that saved me to think I'm not a total failure on codicles. So all of the other stones I sold, I kept the one. A year and a half later, which was six or seven months ago, I decide, well, you know what? I'm back in the codical game. So I call up a friend of mine who I trust implicitly regarding stones. And I said to him, I said, Keith, I said, I want to get a codical. I said, I have a stone that gives me a really brisk edge. I want one kind of like on the other end of the spectrum that is kind of more of a comfortable, uh, uh, different type of edge. And he says, I got the stone for you. So he, he, he sends the stone out. But I, before he did that, I said to him, I said, you know, I said, Keith, one question. 
did you hone a razor on the stone? Did you try it? He said, yep, no problem. So he sends it out to me. A few days later, I get the stone. Right away, I go into my workshop and I try honing on it. I'm like, ah, oh, not again, not again. I thought I was good at this. Couldn't get an edge to save my life. I was up every night till midnight or more for an entire week trying to get an edge on that stone. I tried every possible combination of things that I knew and I couldn't get anywhere. Uh, well, I was kind of embarrassed to call, call the guy I got the stone from because I didn't want to tell him that I couldn't hone on it. But if you're listening to this and you're noticing uh, a, a, a common theme here, um, a common denominator, uh, you realize that it's not the stone, it's me. So anyway, I call up another friend of mine. And this guy, he is a codical magician. He can get an edge on any kind of codical. He's incredible on codicals. Anyway, I call him up and I say, David, I said, uh, can you do me a favor? I said, I have a stone here that I can't get an edge on. Do you think if I send it to you with one of my razors, you can uh, try it out and see what you can do with it? He's like, sure, Matt, send it out. And I send it out to him. A few days later, he emails me and he says, you know, I got your stone. He says, I honed on it last night. I shaved with it this morning. And I was able to get a really nice edge and it gave me a great shave. He said, but I'm going to try a couple other things to see if I can take it a little bit further. Well, that's not the email I wanted to get. I wanted his email to say, Matt, I tried honing on this stone. It's a piece of junk. Nobody could get this thing to work. But that's not what he said. I, I, I can tell you, these codicles are humbling, man. They will humble you. Anyway, uh, next day he emails me, says, yeah, I tried something else. He says, I got a little better. And then the third day he says, I tried this third thing. He says, I think I took it as far as I can take it. He says, I'll send it back to you. He does. Sends it back to me. The first thing I do, open up the package, I go down in my workshop and I put that edge under the microscope. And I'm looking at the edge and I'm looking at it and, I, and all I can think is, David, I hate you. How did you do this? How did you get this kind of edge? All those hours and all those things that I did, I didn't come anywhere near this kind of edge. So I email him back, you know, we're talking to him and I'm picking his brain. And after about, oh, 30 emails, he says to me, well, you know, when I hone on codicles, I don't use any slurry. What? You mean, you like use a slurry and then as you get towards the end, you, you don't use any slurry just to finish it underwater. He said, no, I don't use any slurry on the codicles at all. I was like, what? Everyone knows you use a slurry on a codicle. You build it up and you do the circles and then you dilute it and you dilute it. Make sure you dilute it slowly enough, not too fast. And you dilute it down to water, this and that. It's like, no, nope, no slurry. He said there was a guy, his name was Paco on the boards, that talked about this a couple years ago. And uh, people were trying it and he had tried it. And he said it worked really well for him. Um... Uh, so he wasn't, you know, this, this idea of, of no slurry on a codicle is not new. I mean, Murray Carter's been talking, it, talking about it for years. Um, my understanding, and from a very reliable source, is that when you used to order a codicle back in the day, you'd never get a slurry stone. It just came with a stone. They didn't start putting slurry stones in codical boxes until around the 1960s. There was no history of slurry stones with codicles. So what I'm talking about here again really isn't new. Now, I get the slurry thing. I get the ritual. Building up the, the slurry, uh, you know, the nice creamy slurry, and then you take your razor through it, and you do the circles, and you see it starting to get gray, and you go, ooh, this is a fast stone. You go back the other way, and as you pull it through, you feel that velvety feel. And the aroma, the earthy aroma that comes off of that slurry, it's intoxicating. I know, you think I'm crazy for saying that? All right. Let's go to the scope. I'll show you. All right, so let's look at some pictures of what I have found 
over my time, over the past seven months of trying to figure these codicles out. I mean, over the past seven months, I have honed on pretty much nothing but codicles and has shaved on nothing but codicles. And I can tell you, the edges that I get, once I got really good at it, are phenomenal. I mean, I get the whole codicle thing at this point. I mean, they really do give good edges if you can really know how to, how to take that stone uh, to where it needs to be. So what I have found within this, over the past seven months in doing this and checking this whole, whole thing out with the slurry and the no slurry, is that from looking under the microscope, is that the slurry tends to cause more problems than solutions that it could ever provide. All of the work you do on the edge after the slurry is to repair the, the damage that the slurry caused, okay? Just stick with me on this one, all right? What I wanted to show you here is on this microscope, this VHO microscope that I use, um, as the finish becomes, as the edge becomes more refined and more polished, it tends to get darker. This is a 1K. This is a nanocloth finish, which is, you know, super bright, super shiny, no scratches, it looks black. Okay, so that's going to be important when I show you some of the other pictures. All right, so let's go to this first stone that I got about seven months ago that I was trying to get an edge on for a week, every night, hours and hours and hours, 10, 12, 15 hours I spent on this thing, and this was the best I could do. Well, after David sent me that razor back, and I looked at it under the scope and saw what he could do. Right away, I went in my workshop, and over time, I was able to do this. Look at the difference between those two. The one on the left is a slurry technique. The one on the right is no slurry technique. If you want to stare at these pictures some more, just hit the pause button. I'm going to try and go through them to so I won't spend too much time on this. But that is a huge difference. I can tell you right now, the difference in the shave is as dramatic, is as dramatic as the, as the picture looks. All right, so this is approximately two weeks time in difference. That's how long it took me to be able to get from one point to another. All right. Next picture I wanted to show you. All right, this is, a, this is an old picture of mine of, of a, of, of a codical edge, and I wanted to make note on this point is this is what I call the dreaded white line. If you're using this microscope, the VHO scope, and you put an edge under the scope and you look at it and it looks like this, you're dead in the water, okay? That, that white line, it, it kills you. You gotta start back from the beginning. I don't really know what it is. I know it's caused from the slurry, but it's not good. Okay, this is <laughs> this, this is a, an edge from a couple of years ago. This was a, an LPB, La Petite Blanche codicle that I bought. This was on my second round. This, is the, the, this was the edge I was able to get. This is a slurry technique, and this edge just really didn't work that well. That's why I ended up selling this stone. Well, when I've been going through my, when I've been going through my, my stuff here and trying to figure this out, what I did is I tried tracking down some of the stones. And I actually found the stone from a guy that I sold it to. Sean, I appreciate your graciousness in sending it back to me. Well, um, he, sent it, he sent it back. I wanted to try it again. I wanted to make sure that the problem I had was with me and not the stone. So I did it again. And this is what I was able to do. The difference there is huge. Notice the darkness, the refinement, the polishing. Uh, the scratches there, yeah, that's just from doing circles, but the difference in the shave was huge. This was very rewarding to me to be able to do this. So, you know, so I really knew that I wasn't, that, that the stone wasn't the problem. I was the problem and I was able to resolve this. So that felt really good to see that. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to throw up some stones uh, lately that I've been able to get. And I just want you to look at the edges 
and see what I've been able to do with this no slurry technique. And if you want to pause and look at them, feel free, but I'm just going to go through them real quick. Notice the darkness. You can see some scratches here. Now you have to understand that this is all first try on the stones. Uh, since I've been doing this, I've been on dozens of stones. Every stone I've gotten to work, first try. Amazing edge. This, that edge, amazing. This edge, right here, one of the best edges I've ever shaved with. Another edge. Amazing edge. You notice you see the scratches up here down at the bottom where it gets darker where the scratches go. That is refinement of the edge. No slurry technique. Cautical only. Okay. Now, this next thing I'm going to show you. This is an edge. This is a, this is a stone that I've used. This is a slurry technique on the stone. These next two pictures are going to sum up everything that I've, that I've, that I've been able to do in the past seven months. This stone was done, or edge was done on a stone with a slurry. This is a slurry technique. This was a very nice shaving edge. Well, after I've got this figured out, I took the same razor on the same stone with my technique. Pow! Look at that. That is a huge difference. I can tell you right now, this edge right here is the best shaving cortical edge I've ever used. Ever. This is an amazing edge and you're going to see me put this edge on, on the stone. Uh, you're going to see me do this in the technique portion. It's the second uh, uh, stone that I use. All right. So that's enough for the, for the, for the microscope pictures. Let's talk about some other stuff. Next thing I want to talk about uh, where do I start from? Uh, well, when I, when I use this technique with the no slurry, I start from a 5K. 5K Shapton. This is the stone I start from. Now, I know that some people want to do a one stone hone, uh, you know, 1K, and then use their codicle all the way through to the end. Uh, a couple things I have to say about that. Um, first off, you don't, I can't imagine that you're always starting at a 1K. That's a bevel setter. I mean, you know, if you need to resharpen your stone, you don't need to set the bevel. Starting at a 5K level would be fine. Uh, the other thing is, is that even if you're going from a 5K, now I understand the purpose of the slurry is to, you know, from take take your edge from the lower gauge, that 1K, if you're starting from there, you use the slurry, it'll, the slurry will take you through the mid-level, and then you start to dilute the slurry to get you to the finish. Um, that works great in theory, but in practice, it doesn't work. Because what happens is when you use the slurry, in some of those pictures I showed, that slurry makes some 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 scratches in there that as you go what you're attempting to do beyond the slurry is repair the scratches and the damage done from the slurry and your end product is still not going to be as good as if you didn't do use the the slurry at all to begin with i mean these cauticles are finishing stones that's what you do with them you finish on them you know uh that's what they were designed to do. These synthetic stones work wonderfully. I said to a friend of mine, I said, you know, welcome to the 21st century. 5K. Some people will start from an 8K. I think I like 5K because then it, it, to me, it embeds the entire finish with the cortical rather than if you go up higher 8K, you might just be, might just be polishing that. But like I said, it's a finishing stone, you know. Stop trying to take this and do this with it. Use it as it was intended. Uh, okay, next thing. I do this technique under running water. The reason I do it under running water is because as you move that, that razor around, what happens is you'll start to break off those little garnets. Uh, the garnets are the part of the, of, of the cortical that actually do, do the cutting. They're these sharp little things that can break off. They're like little chunks of carbide floating around in there. So by doing this technique under running water, you're constantly washing those garnets away. Uh, this is 
what's called auto slurry. You know, as you as you work the edge on there, a slurry will start to build up. Now, some people say, well, you know, my stone doesn't auto slurry. Yes, it does. They all auto slurry. It's just a matter of how much. People think an auto slurry is just a visible slurry. Well, you just need, oh, just a few of those garnets. If you're doing this technique on your bench with a spray bottle and you're just using water and you're, and you're running your razor on there, those garnets are coming off and they get into that slurry between the, the edge and the stone and they just start, you know, scratching up your edge. So by doing it under running water, uh, uh, you're constantly washing those away. And you'll see how I do that on, on, on the technique video. These, these garnets that float around in there, it's kind of like, you know, sand in a, in, in a gas tank. You know, that sand gets into the motor. It scars up the cylinder wall. You know, these garnets are not, they don't break down. It's not like a Japanese stone where it, where it breaks down and becomes finer. Those garnets are there and, and, and there's, you know, they're just in there floating around, messing everything up. Uh, all right. The next thing I wanted to talk about was pressure. Pressure is huge. Um, so... Um, the thing about pressure, one thing that I've re that has really improved my honing on on all different stones is the use of pressure, or should I should say, the lack thereof. So, how much pressure do I use, or do I recommend that you use? Well, I've quantified it. I used my pizza scale. I took my my razor and I put it on the scale to see how much pressure it was. And what I found is that it's six to eight ounces of pressure is what you use. Um, how much is six to eight ounces? Well, if I had to show you, it's about as much pressure as it takes to dent your skin, about that much. So you're using that much pressure as you're putting that razor on the home, okay? And then you finish off with one and a half to two ounces of pressure. That's 50 to 60 grams for my metric blokes out there. One and a half to two ounces, is, you don't dent the skin at all. It's just a little more than the weight of the blade. That's how, that's how little pressure it needs. And that's all that you need because you will get fantastic finishes doing that with the, with the light amount of pressure. Uh, the next thing, circles. I love to use circles, okay? Because circles, you'll see in my technique, but I do circles and I mix it with X's. What I found is that circles will not only make the edge smoother, I like to end with circles, but even in the beginning and the middle of the process, uh, by using circles, it will give you a smoother edge. Um, here's a, uh, a picture of a, of a codicle that I was doing purely X's on. And then I took the same stone and did purely circles on. Now this is an extreme case, I understand, but if you look at the difference of the edge, real toothy with just X's and it definitely smoothed out with circles. Not all stones are going to be like that, but if I had a more powerful microscope and could look at, you know, a, a more magnified edge on other stones, I think you would still see something similar. So I like to use circles because I think it does give you a smoother edge. All right, next thing, very thorough stropping, very thorough stropping. Uh, what I like to do is I not only strop when I'm done on the codicle, I like to strop before I go to the codicle. So after the 5K, I strop it. And when I talk about stropping, I mean I mean mostly the, the prep strop, either be it your linen or suede. Lately, I've been really liking my suede, but uh, before the stone, before I go on the codicle, after the 5K, I'll go like, uh, you know, 40 passes. Tw I, go, I go 20 on linen, 20 on suede, and then after... It's like 75 on linen or suede, whichever you decide to use. So definitely very thorough stropping helps a whole bunch with codicles. Um, so that brings us to the end part, and this is going to bring us full circle. And the thing is, how do you know when you're done honing? How do you know when you're done? You know you're done when you bring that razor across the stone, as you start to bring it, it sticks. It starts to get real sticky. It feels almost like someone's pulling that, that, that razor down to the stone. And as you pull it across, as, as you start working it, you'll feel it start to stick. But it doesn't, it's not a gradual process. As you pull it across, it goes, you pull it, it goes, kick, and, and it slows. And then you pull it back and it goes, kick, kick. <laughs> and it goes, kick, kick, kick. Now, 
It doesn't make that sound. It makes that sound in my head, but you'll feel it. It'll, it'll skip across, kind of like, you know, when you throw a stone across the pond, it skips across. That's what the, what the razor does across the edges. And as it does it more, and then finally, what's going to happen is you pull it across, it'll stick the whole way. It goes all the way across on both sides. And at that point, you know you're done. And that's what Jared was talking about. That's what Jared was trying to tell me that I didn't get at the time. That stone has given everything that it has to give. You see, because what happens when you do this, when you run the stone, the razor across the stone, if you were to look at a cross section of the stone, these are the garnets and the sub substrate, it looks like this. So as you pass your razor over it, it's doing this. But the more you work it, the more the razor microscopically starts to conform to the stone and it does this. And as you do this, it exponentially increases the surface area or the contact between the stone and the, and the razor. And that's when you get the stick like that. That's when it starts to stick. This same principle is what they build slick race tires on because slick race tires don't have any grooves, so there's more surface area, but a slick race tire is designed to run at real high temperature, 200 plus degrees, and what happens is it gets real gummy, real soft, and what it does is it conforms to the asphalt and gives massive amounts of traction or stiction or friction, and what it does is it makes things like this possible, or this. This is Casey Stoner, Australian world champion. Uh, Laguna Seca, turn nine, 130 plus miles an hour, 71 degree lean angle. That is massive. That's a massive amount, not only lean angle, I mean, that's not far off of purely horizontal, but the amount of traction and the force that those tires are withstanding, and it's all based on that principle. So, oh, one other, two other things I wanted to say regarding the, the end and how you know you're done. If you use tape, if you use tape, that, that, that uh, uh, stiction's not going to happen quite as much, but it still does. You just have to be a little more aware, aware of it, and it's just a little bit lighter of a sensation, but it still will happen, all right? And the final thing I wanted to say here is there are some people that will have told me, they say, look, I don't like finishing on, on, on straight water. I like to finish on a misty slurry. <laughs> misty slurry, dude. Um, and, and that's fine. I get that. Um, but here's what happens. The misty slurry, what it is, it's, a, it's the edge toned down. You're toning down the edge. This, these edges that I'm, I'm showing you that I'm talking about may be a little bit too brisk for someone or for some people for their taste and they like it toned down. Well, my suggestion is, is that you do it as I say. You take it all the way to the end until that thing sticks and then take your, take your, your, your stone and a, 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 your, your uh, slurry stone and do a couple circles back and forth and just get a real light slurry and then take maybe half a dozen or a dozen passes with your razor and that'll be your misty, misty slurry and that'll give you the edge that you want. I think it's better to go all the way to the edge and then step back a little bit versus if you're diluting and diluting and diluting and you don't really know exactly where the edge is, you're never really sure. This way you go all the way to the end, then you step back and you're right where you want to be. So that's Everything that I wanted to cover, the next video is going to show the technique. The third video is going to be maxing out cuticles. So I really appreciate you guys sticking around. If you made it this long, if you have any questions, email me, drmatt357 at hotmail.com. If you want to send me letters, tell me I don't know what I'm talking about, drmatt357 at hotmail.com. Just include some pictures. All right. Have a great day. I appreciate you, appreciate you for watching. You still here? It's over. No, it's not over. All right. Thanks for sticking around. I wanted to make a special offer to you guys who are watching this video. Um, if you're skeptical of some of the things that I'm saying, or you just want to try what I'm talking about, uh, you want to try an edge, uh, I'm making an offer right now. It's 
Memorial Day 2015, paying some respect to our fallen soldiers and their families. Uh, this offer is going to go until I decide not to do it anymore. That's why I'm putting it at the end of the video because I can trim it. But if you want to try this, send me a razor. I'll do it for free. I'll put a cortical edge, like what I'm talking about, the no slurry technique, and uh, you let me know how you like it. Put some comments in when you when you get it. Uh, let me know. Email me. Uh, all I ask that you put uh, $2 in the envelope for me to return ship it. Uh, don't send me a razor that's that's a mess that needs the bevel set. Make sure if you send me a razor that it's one that will already shave really well. Also, if you have a stone that you've been having a hard time with, send it to me with your razor. I'll try and see what I can do on it if you, if, if you want me to give it a try. Uh, I can't guarantee that it'll work. Not all codicles are going to give great edges, but so far I'm batting a thousand. Um, so, yeah, send me your stuff. If you want to do it, email me and we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. I'll tell you where to send it. Uh, otherwise, have a great day. Appreciate you for sticking around. And this is the end. Stick around for part two and three if you want to watch it.